This one business model is expected to exceed $280 billion in market value in 2024. We will first look at how to create a product, how to build a team around that, and then finally, how do you go about scaling it and finding product market fit. In this series, I'll cover all of that using the insights that I've taken multiple SaaS companies past the million dollar per year mark and show you exactly how we were going about implementing these strategies to get to $500,000 per month for our partners. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hello, in this video, I'm going to be walking through exactly what it will look like to grow a SaaS to 500k per month. But we're going to be starting at you have a small team, we're back uh, to being bootstrapped. And what would this team look like in the first days of your SaaS? Okay, so we've already covered in previous videos, you know, how are we going to build a sales team? What does PMF look like? You know, how do we have a sales manager, territory managers, lead gen specialists, SDRs and AEs, right? But at the beginning, you're going to, you know, likely not have a lot of people. And how do we how do we actually manage this? And how do we make this happen? especially when we are totally bootstrapped, right? You are going to have a team that looks a little bit like this, right? So we're going to start, we're going to start like this. So you as CEO slash founder, and then we're going to have a couple other people in here. We don't want to make this too bulky, right? So we want to make sure that at the beginning, a business, as I love to say, is that it's a, a business is just an expensive idea until you've made a sale. So make sure that you have a sales rep. Now, this person will be an AE at the start, they will also take responsibilities as a SDR, right? So what does this mean? They're going to be cold calling the leads, right? They can be texting, calling, following up, you know, launching email sequences. They really need to be a Swiss army knife with the team here and being able to generate leads, generate appointments and generate sales, right? They could be going, go to, going door to door around here, setting up meetings. They might even, you know, have assistants, VAs, et cetera, whatever they need to make sure that they're getting a meeting set for themselves, right? Generating uh, revenue opportunities, especially at the beginning, they need to be working very close with you as the founder. You need to be talking to them about development so they understand the product, et cetera. You need to know all this stuff, right? Over here, you also need to have the development team, right? So if you are not the development team, you need to have dev team. And this could be, ex, you know, to make it cheaper, you could have it overseas. But I would particularly recommend having someone that you trust and know that is working with you on an equity basis earlier on because they'll have skin in the game and can help be the team lead for development later on down the line, okay? So that's what I would recommend. So you keep it mean and lean. And if you still are needing extra support, right? What I've also seen is these duos, these founder, co-founder teams. So you might have in here as well, right? Your co-founder. And it depends if you're technologically leaning, right? If let's say you've had coding experience in the past. Now, what you'd want to do is make sure that your co-founder is someone who can handle the marketing side or they're handling the coding side, right? So that they know is the dev team doing the right thing. Maybe it's more on the logistics slash, you know, COO responsibilities. You just want to make sure that your, your co-founder has the ability to do this, right? And one other thing sort of on an, on an equity perspective, and this is just something I, I'm, I'm going to throw out there. It doesn't really pertain to this structure of you and the team, but whenever I'm doing partnerships in this context, I make sure that it's never 50 50 because inevitably no two people do the exact same amount of work and it just usually leads to feeling that one person's not doing enough so what i recommend here is having some sort of a partnership or equity plan if you're doing co-founding you know that you are making sure that there is an uneven distribution of the company equity right so just so that it's very clear who is going to be doing the the brunt of the work here and what's going to be working right so we've talked about the sales and the team size, right? And making sure that we have the sales strategy in place. I would also recommend once you grow to a point where there is revenue coming in that you have a assistant, maybe it could just be a VA as well. Because if you think about leverage tasks, there's a couple different different ways to think about it, right? So there are zero dollar an hour tasks. These things are scrolling on social media. There are negative, you know, a hundred or a thousand dollar tasks. 
um, drinking alcohol, going out partying, right? These things don't actually help you with the business at all. And then they have negative secondary consequences down the line. Now, when we get into hundred dollar an hour tasks or, you know, five, let's say $10 an hour tasks, these are answering emails, answering discord or Slack messages, doing communication with the team, you know, sitting in on meetings, not making decisions, right? These are all things that just waste time and that are, that are pretty low level tasks. Um, higher up along with those tasks is also just like cleaning your house, cooking yourself dinner, all these things. So once you get to a higher level here, say a hundred or a thousand dollar an hour tasks, you know, these are, these are tasks that are highly leveraged, right? A hundred dollar an hour tasks are solving business problems. A thousand dollar an hour tasks are solving questions related to hiring. Are you getting the right people on board? Are you creating SOPs? Are you creating things that are scalable? Are you creating content, right? That's going to last you for a long time, right? Those are higher level tasks than 10,000 and a hundred thousand dollar an hour tasks. These are the ones about, you know, say you're looking at acquiring a new company, right? So doing M&A, doing the research there and understanding, is this what you actually need and, and doing that, right? There are companies out there like McKinsey that, that literally focus their entire time on these types of large scale business decisions and they are paid very, very well. So if you consider your own time to be similar to that, right? You don't need to have someone who's essentially doing the thinking for you then in that case, you're should, you should be thinking about how much you would have to pay for the market value of that assessment, right? So take those things seriously. The VA's response here, they are to take care of things like email, you know, calendar, maybe they can do some bookkeeping, bookkeeping, etc. right? We, we, these things that finance, there's, there's a bunch of things around tax that if you don't do, you're going to be in big trouble. But if you do them, they're not going to make any money for your business, right? So these are just sort of the annoying things that you got to get done. So this is the rough way that I would develop a team, I would make sure to get a co founder as well. Because being in the SaaS space, or someone who has experience, will just do so much better for you, because they will give you that motivation and insight that you don't get alone. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to go through, you know, I'm going to be building out and showing you more parts of the team. We've only defined the sales structure at the moment, but as you can see, going from a sales team to actually building your team here, this is what I would be on the lookout, right? Because as we grow, you know, you, you'll start to get more people on board and then they'll take over specific tasks here, right? You might in the end, after this person, they will extend and then you will have a dedicated finance manager, right? you might extend as well that, uh, you know, your VA is not doing everything with the bookkeeping and finance. So then you will have, you know, a dedicated finance or no, sorry, you would have a dedicated um, content team, you know, and say the VA is posting your material and distributing content. Well, then you're going to need someone to help you develop that content, right? And from the content team, right, then then we look at other aspects of this, right? We look at how do we get a let's do this like this video editor. And then if we go expand on that a little bit more, you know, inevitably, you'll be needing someone who is a content director, right? All these things. In terms of the marketing co founder, you will inevitably, if the business continues to grow, you might need a marketing team, right? So this will be everyone who is creating, creating, you know, creatives, copy, look and feel, so brand, guide, assets, right? All this stuff, design for everything, right, that you're doing, so you're going to need that coming off of this marketing aspect. If it's in terms of coding, your team will never get smaller, right? They just continue to get larger, and as you have more tech debt, uh, you will continue to need a larger team in the future to start to run things at a higher level, right? That's just going to be a part of the growth phase of your business. Now, apart from this, you're going to also need people in terms of logistics here, growing uh, systems, integration. So whatever software is you're using, whatever CRMs, etc., you're going to need people to run this because it just gets out of hand and too much for one person. So hope this is interesting. You can see how this sort of expands very quickly. And you as the centerpiece here, you know, you have a lot of responsibility in growing this team. So it just kind of webs out. That's the way that I like to think about it. But it really is it starts here, you know, you can't have a SaaS without a great product. 
Um, you need sales, you need marketing, so someone who can handle the basic stuff, especially at the beginning when you just get a website and you need to make sure that it's up and running. So that's it. If you've enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe. And if you want extra more insights and value in showing you how to create a $500,000 per month SaaS company, go ahead and check the link below. We walk through the flywheels, the scripts, the frameworks, everything that you need to build a SaaS company from scratch or to scale your company from say 15, 20, $30,000 a month in MRR, way higher, right? To get add an extra couple hundred thousand dollars there. So if that's interesting, go ahead and check that out below for free while it's still there. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.